Section 6.7, mini electron atoms. So the difference between a hydrogen atom configuration uh, and a multi configuration is that the electrons have effect on each other. And the electrons that are crowded around each other kind of give some energy level differences that you would not have if you only had one electron. So if you had one electron and it's move and it's normally sitting out in the 1s and you have all of these infinite possibilities of where it could live, okay, but it never does. It always kind of hangs out in the 1s, but it could be in the 2s or it could be in the 2px or the 2py or the 2pz or all the, any of the d's or the f's of any level. If you give that electron sufficient energy, it can pop up to these and live live for a day like in a hotel in row 12 or whatever. Well, the difference between a single electron atom like hydrogen and a multi-electron atom like anything else is that the electrons can affect each other. So if you have lots of electrons, these electrons are repelling each other, and what that does is it tweaks their energy level just a little bit. So in a one, le a one electron atom, all of the, anything in, uh, in row two, would have the same energy level. So I would call it rent. The rent for that for that orbital would be the same. Okay, so the 2s would be the same as the 2p, the 3s, the 3d, the 3p, the 3f, or 4f, all of those, as long as it's on a 3, all the 3s have, would have the same energy. If it was a 4, all the 4s would have the same energy. Because there's only one electron, and so it's not going to bother anybody, and nothing's going to bother it. If you have more than one electron, then those electrons are going to impede each other a little bit and tweak the level so that every L is going to have a little bit of a different energy. So I'm just going to say that the rents are different. The 2S is going to have a different energy than a 2P, so the 2P is going to be more expensive to live and less likely for it to live there. Okay, The more expensive, the less likely you are to inhabit that room. So here are the orbitals for a multi-atom uh, or multi-electron atom. Each of the different orbitals have a different energy level. And so for an electron to be in that orbital, it must have substantial energy in order to be there. Now I suppose that every once in a while one electron could get enough energy to stay in a stay in a an expensive hotel on row 12. But most of the time, it's going to hang out where it where it's normally lives, and it's going to normally occupy the lowest possible energy level that's there, that's that's available. So, it's you're not going to work harder than you have to. And if I say you don't have to do anything, or you have to do a ten things, you would choose the easier. And it's the same thing. Energy level, they're not going to just you're not going to have a bunch of in one s, and then all of a sudden in the six d you are going to, the very next expensive room will be the one that would fill next, then the next expensive room would fill next. Degenerate still is in the subshells. So for instance, there are three orbitals in the P, so those are degenerate, meaning they're all the same price, same rent. There are five orbitals in the D, and there are seven orbitals in the F, those are all degenerate, they're the same price. The only wacky thing that I see here is that I've got 4s and then a 3d. You would think you've got 1s by itself, then the two, the two uh, s and p, the green ones, and then you should have s, p, and d in the third row, and then the fourth row should be s, p, d, and f, but you're not. What's going to happen is that they get in each other's way a little bit, and it's easier to kind of reconfigure them with an S then with those five D's. So they're a little bit weird and you're gonna see just a little bit weirdness, but when you see the periodic table, you'll see that it beautifully fits and you'll be able to look at it and instantly get whatever answer you're looking for. So here's another wrench in the cogs because I don't, because God didn't make this with, a, with three colors crayons. It's a very complicated universe that he's created and as they studied the, uh, the line spectra very closely, they realized that these lines that are at certain bright, bright lines at certain frequencies 
aren't actually single lines, but there's two lines very, very, very close together, kind of doubles. And that made everything crazy because where did the double come from? They already had understood that you had these quantum numbers, kind of an address, and that the each electron lived in its own little house. Well, what happens is that an orbital isn't a little house for one electron to live in. An orbital is a room for two electrons to live in, and each, each one has a different spin. So if you have a charged particle, and an electron is a charged particle, and you spin it, you are going to get a magnetic field. If you spin a charge, you're going to get a magnetic field. Uh, and a magnetic field will in interfere with another magnetic field. If you have a magnetic field going in one direction and a magnetic field going in another direction, one is south and one is north. And so they're interfering with each other. They're, going, they're, they're bothering each other. And they're going to stay away from each other. Okay? There, there's not an attraction like a south and north magnet. They're spinning in other directions, and so they, they avoid each other all the time. They're constantly, every split second, wherever they happen to be, the other one is in the same orbital away from it as far as they can get because they're avoiding each other. They hate each other's guts. So they had to add a fourth quantum number. You had the first one, remember, which was n equals 1, 2, 3. Those are the levels on the periodic table. The second one uh, de uh, denoted a subshell, an S, P, D, and F subshell. The third one told you what orientation that, that each was in. So, for instance, that the uh, S had one orbital in it. How many rooms were on that, on that floor? The P had three. The D had five. The F had f seven. This one is going to tell you that one girl is going to go one direction and the other girl is going to go the other direction and they're going to avoid each other. And so you have four addresses for every possible atom in nature. And they will, so an orbital now holds two electrons, not one. So the spin number is positive one half and negative one half. There's two possibilities. That means one girl's going one direction and the other girl's going the other direction. Uh, I've shown you before when I drew an orbital that I made one one with uh, denoted it by an arrow positive and then the other by negative or one going up and one going down. That's showing that they're spinning in different directions. And then um, the latest scientist to, to be um, immortalized in this chapter is uh, Wolfgang Pauli. And he basically said that no two electrons can have the same address. You can't have all sets of quantum numbers the same. Every electron is going to be in its own address. So since all since now now we know that the that the orbital can hold more than one, they added a, a fourth quantum number, and so now you have a shell number. You have a you have a a subshell number. You have an orbital number, and you have a spin number. And every single electron can have its own very specialized address.